Today on a chilling episode of Real Ghost Stories Online that some believe will someday be made into a Broadway musical starring the spirit of Catherine Hepburn and Barney the Dinosaur. What happens when a couple, spending a relaxing evening together in their living room, witness a spirit materialize out of thin air directly in front of them? Is the cause to run in fear or simply watch what happens moment to moment? That story and much more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your Real ghost stories with us. We'd absolutely love to hear them. Call it in 24-7. And if you like our program, well, hey, check out our uh, subscription channel on Apple Podcasts. You can even try three days free when you uh, do that. It's uh, called being an extra podcast person on that subscription channel on Apple Podcasts. Try those three days free. Get access to all of our bonus episodes, hundreds of them. Get access to the archive, the advanced episodes. And best of all, there's no ads. So you can listen commercial free. So that's a big perk of it. Check it out and uh, help support our program and uh, get all those extras uh, for yourself over there. You can also do it through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or on our website, ghostpodcast.com, whatever you prefer in case you're not on Apple Podcasts. It's uh, Tony and Harper with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? Well, there's something strange in the neighborhood. Yes. Who are you going to call? Um, probably the guy that kills the bugs because there's a lot of, a no. lot of bugs out there no. that are kind of the ghostbusters. Oh, we're talking a ghostly occurrence. I thought you were talking about bugs. When did you get, when well, there's something strange in the neighborhood? Well, in, sometimes a lot of infestations of spiders can be strange. Uh, when the, the beetles kind of come in and they start forming weird circles on your patio at the shape of pentagrams you start to wonder what are the bugs up to the ghostbusters well maybe maybe you need the ghostbusters if the bugs are doing that sort of stuff yes. but i swear i walked out the other day and there was a, a, a large pack of crickets forming the number 666 on the driveway that's horrible and i no. said uh i don't know if i should call <laughs> that'd be a great prank call to the uh <laughs> to the uh people the bug people um, and be like, yeah, hi, I know, uh, you guys can come out whenever I, you need me, uh, or whenever I need you. They're like, well, what's going on, sir? What, uh, what could possibly be the problem at your, your home? Well, I, uh, I walked out into my driveway today and I, uh, it was just something up, you know, normally hear crickets in the morning. It's, it's dark out still. And I looked in my driveway and those crickets, there was uh, one wearing a robe, and it was Karen what looked like to be a little little skull. And they were they were having a ceremony and there was little flames in the driveway. I think the crickets were having a sacrifice. Is that something you guys can help me with? And then that would just be you could go really weird with it. I love Vigo the Carpathia just right over there in the corner. Hi Vigo. It would be uh you could tie Vigo into it too. <laughs> and then I've been then I've been I've been getting these these messages from a man in my dreams. His name is Vigo the Carpathian. Yeah, that would be fun. 855 853 4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's uh, go over to a, uh, a letter. It says, uh, uh, let me get to it. The story is from when I was around 18, I lived in Edmond, Oklahoma, in a trailer park. I was raising my one-year-old at the time. I wasn't exactly in the best spot in my life and had already had numerous paranormal experiences. I'll never forget when I saw death. I was sitting in my bed writing. It was a sunny day and I had all of the window curtains open and the one by my bed was stained glass as well as my big window in my bathroom. So those did not have curtains in them. And the way my bed was positioned faced the bathroom door to my left, which was open with sun beaming in on. To my right was a full-length mirror that hung on my wall and my television was across the room in the front of my bed. Next to me, I had a computer desk which had a candle lit. I didn't have any kind of fan running and there was no breeze either. 
As I sat writing, I could see everything out of my peripheral vision. When I noticed a large black form take shape, I could see the long cloak leading up to the hood that covered its face. It was so detailed I could even make out the sight that it carried. I watched it slowly move across my room. In front of my bed, when I passed the TV, it dissipated into a swirling black cloud of smoke. Then it passed and became a whole figure again, still walking closer. It came to the side of my bed and in front of my full-length mirror. I watched as, again, it disappeared or dissipated into swirling, ominous black clouds of smoke until it passed the mirror, becoming whole again. I sat extremely still with tears welling up in my eyes, unsure of what to do as this thing, death, grew even closer. I watched it walk right up beside me as it began to walk through my computer desk and the black smoky cloud took form. But at that moment, my candle blew out and I sat afraid and unmoving for a good 30 minutes before I decided to get up and walk out of the room. I was not sure what to do or if I should tell anyone. I didn't think anyone would believe me. I'd probably get locked up in an insane asylum somewhere. I let it go until a week later. I was talking with my now ex in the same room as we sat on the bed and the door slowly closed on its own. It never did that because our home was slanted the opposite direction. So for that to happen, we didn't know what to make of it. Then a month went by and I was alone with my child. She was in the living room playing near the television, which was by the front door. I came walking out of the bedroom and into the living room only to pause because in my peripheral, again, there stood the black spirit I can only describe as death too close to my child for comfort. I watched as he slowly moved and walked out right through the front door. Thankfully, I never saw it again. Now that I'm older and wiser, I think it may have been something darker, forming into what I am most afraid of, or maybe a warning of what was to come in my life. Well, you never really want death roaming around your house. I'm, I just, I'm just glad no one died. I want to know what was to come in life because this is a story from way back and it sounds like some of the not greatest things were happening after that. So I'm wondering if there was some death around this person um, that occurred and maybe this wasn't necessarily a foretelling of death for them personally, but of some other people in their life, if that's indeed what occurred later. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for sharing that story with us. Let's go to another one. It says, before I start, I wanted to say I'm a subscriber and enjoy listening to these stories. It started in 2002, my second year of college at a small sunny campus in Delhi. Growing up, uh, I had believed in ghosts, ghost stories, UFOs, but had never encountered any of my grandfather would tell these stories of relatives, haunted houses and all that stuff. But that's a story for another time. I watched all the unsolved mystery shows and eventually ghost hunters, you name it, growing up. My friends would mention weird things that would happen and being that they both did not believe in the paranormal, it was odd they would mention these weird things that would happen in their dorm room. Then at night, while doing homework with some classmates, I had been told many times by them of flying pencils or various items on the top of a desk or a TV. And then it happened. The clothes basket sitting on the top of the chest in a closet just lifted up and flipped out of the closet as if someone knocked it over or pushed it. As I was the person sitting right next to this when it happened, two other people witnessed it. We just went quiet. And all you said was, do you see that? We tried looking for anything, some sort of answer, but the ratio of basket size to chest, it sat out was not a reason for it to fall. We tried to debunk it, but we could not. After telling other classmates about this story and digging into this, we found out a student back in the 90s had committed suicide on the third floor just below my friend's room where the incident we had witnessed occurred. Next, we asked the RA on our floor. After much questioning, he verified the story, as did others. We also found out another classmate of ours had been given the third floor room at one point to live in. He said he heard some things and decided to move out. We'd also heard reports of people on the third floor walking by, seeing someone's shadow walking around in the room, but the room was not occupied. The campus did not assign that room very much to anyone, most likely because of what happened there, but who knows. Our friends on the fourth floor also told us sometimes they 
could hear stomping or walking around down below. But again, that could be anyone. So that cannot be ruled paranormal or odd. So weird that no one wanted to speak on this when asked and pretended to have no idea. But I guess it was meant not to scare away students. So for that reason, I could see why. So basically, that's my ghost story from college. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to read this. I'll be in touch as I've experienced other odd sightings that cannot be explained. Anyway, Tony and everyone, keep up the good work. Uh, you keep uh, posting. I'll keep listening. Thoughts on that? I can only imagine the dark energy just circling around that room and just like all the rooms above that and below that. I Dorms are weird places. They really are. Um, there, there's a lot of energy in them. It's, a, it's so many people packed into these small, tiny rooms, far more than like a hotel or anything. And there's so much energy at that point in life as well. Nervous energy, anxiety. There's a lot. It's just a ball of emotions. And, and people go through so much. There's suicides. There's things like that that occur. Um, and, and they just seem like ripe to be haunted and i think we, we do hear a lot of stories of dorms that seem to have ghost stories and it's it's not surprising quite honestly yeah but uh thank you for that story uh 855-853-4802 is our phone number at real ghost stories online to share your real ghost stories with us hi hi i just listened to your podcast for the very first time and i'm very inspired to call and tell you my stories um, I am no longer um, wondering about them. I've just accepted them for being positive and happy. Um, my son, who's now 27, um, he was two years old when my father passed away. We actually buried my dad um, uh, the, on my son's second birthday. And um, it was... Very shortly thereafter that my son started talking about Shadow and that Shadow was there with him and he would talk to Shadow and call this little being that he was seeing Shadow. And his um, daycare was at my work, so I knew the teachers really well. And um, the lead teacher came to me and she said, you know, he, I don't want you to be alarmed, but you know, your son talks to Shadow all the time, and it could be related to the fact that, you know, he just lost his grandpa, um, but at two, he doesn't even understand the concept of what a shadow is. So he's he definitely has a little friend, but I just want you to be aware of it, and sure enough, he would start talking to Shadow at home, too, and I was very comforted by the fact that it was my dad, that my dad was going to stay um, in touch with my son and, and um, watch over him. And so that never, you know, was a concern of mine. And then um, my son, we went on a helicopter ride and we were, um, he was maybe three at this point, And we were, he was in the, standing up in the middle um, on the seat between my husband and I, and we were just doing a real quick little helicopter ride at a fair. And he was, my son was laughing and laughing and it was a beautiful fall day. So we thought, oh, he's really enjoying flying in the helicopter. You know, like what little boy wouldn't love that, right? And he was laughing and he says, oh, mommy, mommy, Papa loves this. He just loves this. And I said, oh, is Papa here with us? He said, oh. Yes, mommy, Papa's right here. Don't you see him? Papa's right here. And he loves this. He loves this. And my father was a pilot and he absolutely loved flying, loved it. So I know that he was um, feeling him and he was chatting with him at that particular moment. And then, um, and, he, and my son only met uh, my dad for his first two years so whatever you know impression could be made there was made but my husband's father passed away when my husband was just a little boy and there was a, a photograph on the wall of my father-in-law when he was a young man uh, maybe college age and he was in a football uniform 
and he uh, it was this great photograph on the wall and my son was laying down in the recliner with his feet up where your head should be and his head was sort of draped over where your legs would be and he was sort of spinning around in this recliner that swiveled and he was laughing and laughing and we thought it was just the cutest thing that he was having fun and all of a sudden he says oh I know I know and so it was as if he were talking with someone so my husband said oh my gosh get in here and listen to him he's full-fledged talking to somebody and my husband was a little leery on oh my gosh what is wrong with our son and I'm comforted by the whole thing and he is uh He's, oh, my God, he says, oh, I know, and he's laughing hysterically. And he says, I know. And finally we said, what do you know? Who, who are you talking to? What do you know? And he says, you know, you know him. You know Bob. And he points to the picture of my husband's father as a college-age young man who my son never met. He never knew his name, and, of course, his name is Bob. So we feel that our young, young son was contacted by both of his grandfathers and that he totally was at peace and was never afraid, and it makes us very happy to know that that happened, actually. And then there was just one other thing I wanted to share. So when I was um, working, I was about 22 years old. I had lost my mother when she, um, when I was 15. So it was about seven years after my mother had passed. And I was working, and I was really stressed out about something. And this is, I'm older, so this was before, way before cell phones. And I'm working and I'm super stressed out about something and all I wanted to do, you know, that, that moment where you just want to get advice from your mom. And um, I was just stressed out and I reached for the telephone and I was totally going to dial my mother and my boss said, well, it's okay. Like you can, like, what's the matter? And I said, oh, I was just going to go call my mom. And she's like, well, that's okay. You can use the work phone to call your mom. And I said, well, problem with that is, is my mom died seven years ago and my friend was like oh I'm so sorry and she says yeah she goes that that has to be weird like to overcome that feeling and I said well what's even more odd is that I I totally heard my mother she was speaking to me but it was inaudible I couldn't understand what she was saying but I know she was talking to me and I clearly felt her hand on my shoulder and you know your mother's touch. And it was my mother's hand on my shoulder right before I picked up the phone to call her when I was super stressed out. So I have angels all around me, and I wanted to share that with you. I hope it can help others that might be freaked out when things like that happen. Don't be freaked out. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Thoughts? Well, uh, it makes me wonder with like the little kid's story. Like the shadow and then the pop up. Mm -hmm. So the kid is like saying, is talking to, it sounds like he's talking to two different things. Okay. The grandpa and then the shadow thing. Yep. So it makes me wonder if they're just thinking that the shadow and the grandpa are just the same thing. But it makes me wonder if they're two separate things and the shadow is just this weird thing. It's like the shadow's one thing and the grandpa, the two grandpas, so there's like three things is what you're saying. Yes. Possibly. I I would think that that could be a thing. I mean, it sounds like it kind of progressed with age a little bit. Um, or one, one of them may be shadow because that's all the kid could understand when it was younger. Then as he got a little bit older, he could recognize the two different grandpas. I don't know, but you got a good point. Well, yeah, but they're still pretty much, like, not really at that age mm -hmm. of, like, classifying, like, grant, like different people. Oh, you were classifying uh, different types of uh, paranormal phenomena at three. You were, uh, like, that's uh, a class A orb over... Th I don't even know what that even means. <laughs> I know there what you mean. There is no class. I know, I know. I'm just kidding. 
Uh, but yeah, no, I yeah, exactly. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like this small child could easily just be mistaking, like the shadow to be his grandpa, mm -hmm. or grandpa. Yeah, very. Yeah, he could be. I think that's that could be. But I don't. But he was naming off names. He was Bob, and then there there was Bob, grandpa, and then the shadow thing. Mm -hmm. Three different things. Sure. Maybe maybe the shadow thing was something really dark, and he was protecting his grandchildren from yes. the very dark shadow I could, thing. I, I could see that. Honestly, I could. Because, I mean, like, it sounds like these two uh, grandpas to this child are coming and, like, kind of, like, watching over him. Mm -hmm. And we never really hear more about the shadow thing until they kind of, like, until the grandpas kind of, like, play into this thing. Sure. I agree. I, I agree. I, uh, I I think there might be uh, something working, you know, them working together to keep an eye out for the kid. Yeah. No. Um, I like it. I know I'll be hanging out by you un until you kick it, and then <laughs> we're out of here. Your kids can fend for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Because then we'll probably have to haunt this shit out of them. And then you're going to want to stick around because you're going to see your grandkids. We got to haunt this shit out of them too. And then all these other dead people are going to start coming into our fold. And it's just going to be this big thing of everybody having a big old haunting party for a long, long time. And I'm really going to get impatient because I'm going to want to go see the buffet in heaven. And we're all <laughs> going to be sitting around like... Great, we still got flaming hot Cheetos, but I expect the buffet to be kind of good up there. So can we? Can I move on now? And the flaming know, hot Cheetos are still pretty good, Dad. I hope you can still get them. We'll when you're dead. be up there, like woo. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at uh, Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to another caller. Hi, and hear your ghost story. Hi, my name is Bobby, and I'm calling you from um, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I love your um, your show, and I am a PPE member. Um, calling in to um, talk about one example of um, what I've experienced. Um, in my family, there is a long line of sensitives. I'm one of probably six generations, and mostly women. My ability was identified when I was four years old. I would talk about colors that were surrounding people, um, the different colors that I would see. And my grandmother, who also had ability, taught me to be hesitant to talk about what I could see with anyone outside of our family. Um, she was very kind about it, but she let me know that anybody outside of our family may frown upon that or look down on me if I discussed it outside of us. My earliest memory of seeing spirits was when I was six. Um, I would see them everywhere, and I actually still do. They're around us everywhere. Um, the story I'm going to tell you um, today is one that took place when I was 16. It was a few days before my 16th birthday, and I had a dream that I came home from school. And when I walked in, I could see signs hanging up on the front porch and all around my house. In my dream, I couldn't read what those signs said. And then upon entering the kitchen, my grandmother and my aunt were sitting in the kitchen looking um, over a casket. But what was weird was, is that my aunt was sitting in a chair across from my grandmother, but she was also in the casket. So it was just, it was really strange. But there was also balloons filling the entire house. The next morning, I told my grandmother about my dream the day, um, you know, it was about the day before my birthday when I finally told my grandmother about my dream. And it was funny because she simply nodded. And it was, it was an acceptance nod. She just smiled at me and nodded and said, okay. The next day, um, I came home from school, and this was my actual 16th birthday, and my sisters and my cousins had all made signs wishing me a happy birthday, sweet 16th birthday, and they were hanging across the entire house. The house was full of balloons as well. When I entered the kitchen, a box containing clothing of my aunt's was sitting in the center of the kitchen. My grandmother was actually picking out the clothes that my aunt was going to be buried in. My aunt had passed away eight hours before unexpectedly. She wasn't old. She was 45 years old. My grandmother knew my aunt's spirit was sitting in the chair across from her at the table, which is what I saw when I walked in. I could see my aunt as if she was me, you, or anybody else. So that threw me a little bit. My aunt gave me a knowing look. It was weird. It was almost like a Mona Lisa type smile. 
and just a nod. Like she knew, she knew that I already knew at that point. And that's when I realized what I could see and really what I could do and also what I can do sometimes or what I can see in my dreams and what I sense is real. So I've lived privately with this ability for about 30 years. And I only confide in my closest, um, you know, friends and family. And a lot of times, you know, I do it so that I can forewarn someone or maybe try to help them. Um, but time and time again, my abilities have always consistently been validated. And to be honest, it feels like a burden. And um, I don't know why people refer to it as a gift. It's not always a gift. Sometimes I feel like it's a curse. I have foreseen death. Um, I have foreseen sickness. One of the happier things is I can foresee pregnancies and I can predict the sex of the babies. And so far, I've been 100% correct. It's more a matter of what I can see and what the colors are around the people um, that I'm that I'm trying to read. Luckily, through the years, I've learned how to turn it off um, just as a more means of survival. Because if you put me into a group of people out in public with lots of people, it's really hard for me sometimes and it gets overwhelming and it's draining. So I've learned um, through other mediums how to sort of dull my senses and turn it off. The only thing I can say that my grams left me with before she left this earth was she told me when I was about 17 that um, the gifts that I have and my sisters and she and my cousins have, um, because we're from Scotland, is of the fairies. We're of the fae. And that's maybe why we have it. Now, I realize in today's society that sounds a little hokey. um, But you know what? That's okay with me. But on a side note, I wanted to tell you you both that um, just like you talked about on your show with the pennies, my grams used to always tell me and sing to me pennies from heaven. And since my grams passed because she was my best friend, I find pennies in the strangest places. I'll vacuum my, my, um, my living room rug. And as soon as I put the vacuum away, there's a penny sitting right in the middle of the rug. I have found pennies everywhere, and that's always when I know that my grams is with me, and she's sending me love and reassurance. So um, thank you so much for your great show. I love it. Um, again, I'm a member. I signed up, and it's well worth it because you guys are great, and I can't tell you how many times you've made me laugh, which is not easy to do. So keep it up, and um, just keep up the great work, and I can't wait to listen to um, the future podcast. Have a great day. Thank you for all that, and thank you for those kind words. I like that. I like to know when I'm making someone laugh. It's And it's kind of weird when you do it in here because you don't know if what the reaction is going to be. And some of the stuff I say I know is pretty out there sometimes. But thank you for your story as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's very interesting how you, you have that ability. And I'm glad she's learned to turn it off because I think I would feel the same way if I had that ability where people say it's a gift. I guess if you always want to be dealing with that, I don't, I, I, I'm a fairly impatient person on some things and I, I need to have off time with, with things. Although I'm, cause I'm always on, I'm always doing something. So it'd be very difficult for me if, okay, I'm done with all my regular work and I can't turn that off. That would be very, very difficult. What would you want a, a, a gift or a curse, depending how you look at it like that? What? Would you want that gift or curse like she's talking about, being able to sense things, being able to know, uh, you know, she was flat out knew that someone had died like at the moment that it happened. She's able to tell when someone else is, when when bad things are going to happen and when good things are going to happen. So she'll essentially have a sense that this person's going to die. Uh, and uh, I know the sex of that baby and that person's going to be pregnant. So you have positive and you have negative, but it's all there. There's not just like, let me filter out only to the positive stuff. I'm a very keep to self person. Honestly, not really. You wouldn't want to have that, that uh, even even if you are keeping it all to yourself, you would uh, you would still get it. I'm not an emotional baggage person, okay? That's what you say. So, okay, I guess. So you basically you're saying you'd get it, but you are a keep to yourself person. So you don't want to just have, you'd have to like talk to people to deal with all that. It's like too much information. Yeah. For me. 
Yeah, I uh, I completely agree. Thank you for sharing that story. That was awesome. And I would love to hear from you again. Uh, very, very good storyteller. So thank you for that. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. That right there is uh, going to wrap up the program for today. If you like the show, become an extra podcast person. You can do it through Apple Podcasts now on our channel. Yes, go check out our uh, subscription channel on Apple Podcasts. Become an EPP there. Get access to everything as always. All the EPP bonus episodes, advanced episodes, the archive. You can also sign up if you're not an Apple Podcast through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or our website ghostpodcast.com to get in on all of the commercial free episodes and all of the archive all the bonus just check it out and thank you for that support until next time for harper i'm tony thanks for listening to real ghost stories online